Hi guys, it's Monday, June 8th, and we are still in isolation. We've been in isolation since the last week of March because of COVID-19, and we are just starting now to get things back opened up in the communities. Uh, we're opening up very slowly and trying to monitor to make sure that we don't expose ourselves to this virus. Because as it feels like we're back to normal this summer, the virus is still out there and we still have to be cautious. So this is our 15th episode of Waxing On. Today we're looking at the big bands of Woody Herman in the 1970s. First time I saw Woody Herman was probably about 1974, uh, Grand Theater in Kingston. And at that time he was touring behind two albums. One of them being The Raven Speaks, which was the first album I had purchased of Woody's. And it was a great album. It was where Woody kind of turned the corner and got into music that was more in line with what people like me being in high school and stage bands, the kind of stuff we wanted to play. Uh, Woody's band had done a few albums prior to this where they started to do a little more commercial, a little more um, popular songs, but they never got to the stage like uh, the ones I mentioned a couple weeks ago where uh, Maynard Ferguson with uh, Primal Scream when Bob James was producing or The uh, Connection by Don Ellis where things got very commercial. Woody's Band still was Woody's Band. On this album, and I got this one about 1973, uh, he did a few songs that were standards. We got uh, Herbie Hancock's song. We've got a couple by uh, Keith Jarrett. He does a theme, theme song for Summer 42. He does Carol King's It's Too Late. Now you're thinking, well, there's a very popular commercial song, but he did it in his own style. It was the same kind of arrangement, the same kind of sound that we could have reproduced with our stage band. And Woody was uh, featured playing soprano sax on this, which he did a lot during the periods I'd seen him. Now, I'd seen Woody about four times during this era in the mid-70s. So the time I first saw him, again, he was touring behind Raven Speaks, and I'll tell you in a couple of minutes why I think this was his turning point, because he really locked into this album. The other album he was touring behind was the follow-up to it called Giant Steps. Now, by the time I'd seen him, Dave Stahl was the lead trumpet player. But um, one of the other trumpet players was arranging and doing a lot of solos, and that was Bill Stapleton. And I thought he was fantastic. He did a lot of great stuff on here. He did a lot of the arrangements. He's got uh, three or four songs on the first album. The second one, he does a, a solo on Leon Russell's A Song For You on Flugelhorn, and it's just amazing. It's just great. Um, this one, again, we're going back to some standards, like A Child Is Born, John Coltrane's Giant Steps. But then he's also putting in Chick Corea, La, La Fiesta, and songs like Leon Russell's um, A Song For You. Now, he was not just doing Leon Russell once. He did Leon Russell a second time. We'll talk about that in another album that he does here where he does Leon Russell's Superstar. He does another Carole King song on a future album called Jazz Man, which is one we used to play with our big band. And he would put those in, but he would also stay true to the original kind of big band classics. So the next album, and this one was where he brought in another trumpet player, Tony Klatka, who started doing some arranging and taking some of the solos. And Bill was not quite as featured as much as he was on previous albums. Now, this one, again, just talking how he was playing a lot of commercial music, even things outside the box, this one uh, has a version of Frank Zappa's America Drinks and Goes Home. So, I mean, Woody was really stretching out, trying to appeal to the younger audience, but also at the same time playing music that we could reproduce. On these albums, a lot of these arrangements were available. They were available as recorded by the Woody Herman band, so you could really duplicate what you had heard if you had the players. And unfortunately, some of them were pretty challenging. But very good albums, those three. Uh, another one that I enjoyed from this period was Woody Herman and the Thundering Herd, King Cobra. And again, we still have Dave Stahl playing lead trumpet on here. Um, by this time, we've lost Bill Stapleton. He's not there any longer. Uh, on this one is where he does Chicory of Spain, and this is where Carol King's Jazz Man came from on the, on the King Cobra album. Now, one of the things I enjoyed most was because I got to hear Woody three or four times. I think it was four times. Twice at the Grand Theater in Kingston and twice in Toronto at the Belvedere Jazz Festival that we talked about a few weeks ago. We were telling you about Maynard Ferguson. Here's one called Heard at Montreux. And as you can see, if you look up closely, the front of his music stands are still reflecting that album cover from The Raven Speaks. That's why I said I think Woody 
took as this as a real turning point and he locked into that as being where this new sound, this new band, this new style was coming from and that was what he wanted to associate himself with. And like a lot of bands, it sounded best when they were live. They did a version of a song on here called I Can't Get Next to You that they'd originally done on a previous album and it was the studio version and it wasn't, it wasn't bad, I mean it was a good song. But when they did it on here and they did it live, this thing really comes, becomes electric. It's really exciting. The players are really giving it at all and the arrangement or the performance on this, you really just can't compare it with what was on the studio album. This is also where Dave Stahl is featured doing Leon Russell's Superstar and just an amazing job. So one of the things I do like and you notice even with the Maynard Ferguson one and the Don Ellis, we come back to the live performances, the chance to hear what the band was really doing without all the studio tricks, it was just the band there playing. One of my favorites, heard at Montreux. And of course, always go back, the first one, and this is the way with a lot of albums I found, usually the first album I bought is the one that becomes my favorite for a long time, Raven Speaks was just excellent. If you get a chance to find that or find it online, give it a listen, it's a really good album. Now, just to go back a little bit outside of the 70s, prior to Raven Speaks, what he had a couple of, well, he had a couple of albums he was doing more commercial. I think one was called New Music. There was one here that I liked just because of a couple of things on it, Heavy Exposure. And he was starting to get into more commercial music. He's doing, uh, well, I Can't Get Next to You is on this album, Memphis Underground by... Um, Herbie Mann, sorry, um, but also Sex Machine by Sly Stone, but this is one of the albums where probably one of the last few that Bill Chase played on, as well as one of the few albums I found that had Tom Bones Malone playing trombone for him, so Tom Malone as part of the, the Woody Herman band, and you'll remember we talked about Tom back during the Blues Brothers section where he had played with Saturday Night, uh, David Letterman's band, he was arranger, trombone, saxophone, trumpet for Blues Brothers, and he's played with just about everybody. But that's where he's, Woody Herman's album that I found. And another one, if you can find it, right here, Anniversary 1963, an older album. It may be called different things. Uh, a lot of times they re-release these albums under different titles. Significant song on this, well, firstly, significant because Bill Chase is still on here. So another one with Bill Chase. But we've got the trombone section. Phil Wilson. And there's a song on here called It's a Lonesome Old Town. And it's probably worth the price of the album itself. You get a chance to hear it. And I know some people may have heard of Phil Wilson. I mean, he's not a popular, popular trombone player, but some of the people know of him. The trombone solo he plays on here is just amazing. It's hard to, it's hard to describe, and it is very exciting if you get a chance to hear it. So if you get a chance, check that out just for Phil Wilson's solo. So that's it for today, my recommendations on Woody Herman. Uh, Wednesday, rock and roll, and Friday is the mixed bag, so we've got a little surprise for you on Friday. Everybody stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you on Wednesday.